Hi y'all, in this video I'm going to be talking a little bit about a sauerkraut and a French guy named JF, fucking French last name that I'm pretty sure even the French can't pronounce, so uh, I'm not going to try. Kraut, if you're watching this, have a seat, son. Let's chat. Uh, but before we get started, I have two sets of pictures to show you with two pictures each, and then I have a couple questions for you, Kraut. So uh, here's set one. And set two. Now, uh, while I'm talking to everyone else, I want you to think very carefully about this question and see if you can come up with the right answer. Uh, in each set, are either of these sets of animals uh, the same species? Uh, so maybe yes, maybe no. You tell me. All right. While he's doing that, everybody else. Um, Kraut has put out a series of videos. I'm sorry, he's been putting out some very learned treatises on biology for all the peoples of the world, so they'll understand biology. Fortunately, it's pro bono, so they're getting their, their money's worth. Uh, and it's on race realism. Is what he's responding to race realists, and he thinks that he's got these wonderful arguments, and he's just poning the shit out of race realists. Meanwhile, uh, some, some PhD biologist named J.F., French name, has been eating uh, Kraut's lunch. He's just been knocking his legs out from under him, just chop, 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 chop. And like the Black Knight in that Monty Python video, or movie, uh, Kraut keeps getting back up and coming for more. I kind of have to say, I admire the consistency. It really takes a lot of work to be that wrong that frequently. I mean, it's like, amazing, in some sense. Okay, so, so far as I understand race realists, they have three major propositions, the, the three central propositions. The first is that races exist. Uh, the second is that there are uh, IQ differences, on, on average, between the races. And the third is that IQ is caused in part by genes. So from that, it follows as the night does the day that the differences between racial groups and respective uh, average IQs will in part be explained by uh, genetic factors, genetic causes. Okay, uh, there, may be, there may well be a race realist who have additional propositions, like how you might want to draw national boundaries or allocate resources or something like that. I don't have any time for those people. But in respect to the three central propositions that I proposed a moment ago, uh, those are all true. Uh, sorry if you don't like that, but it is the case. Now, confronted with that, uh, there are a couple of ways that people can argue against it. Uh, one of which is you can just become terminally obtuse, you know, when you start talking about race and... I'm sorry, Ray? Rays? No, race. R Ray? R-A-I-S-E? Like, race the blinds? I mean, I have no idea what you're talking about. Can you define... Can you define... Can you spell that for me? Can you define it? Uh, so, here's an example of that. I've got a very simple short question for you because I've gone back through your back catalogue of videos and so far as I can see you don't actually address this point what is a race as you understand it I'm Landon Cole I'll see you next time that's D Landon Cole uh, I don't know why he was doing it but a frequent reason that it is done is the way that when you uh, can't give a definition of race that is all-encompassing and doesn't admit of exceptions, they can say, aha, your definition is imperfect, and therefore there's no such thing as race. You're wrong, I'm right, I win, you lose, la la la. So that's one of the reasons that comes up. That's one way. Another way is um, you can pretend that uh, something that wasn't argued was argued, and then you can argue against that. So, for example, Academic Agent put out a video the other day responding to someone on the race realism debate, in the first seven seconds of the guy's video, he explicitly states his proposition, which is that uh, the average IQ differs between racial groups. Okay. The academic agent is a YouTuber who made a video regarding race and intelligence that essentially challenges people who accept that average intelligence differs among racial categories and how intelligence can relate to a nation's economic or governmental style. Okay, not very complicated. The average IQ differs between racial groups. This guy, uh, academic agent, turns around to respond to that by adverting to the existence of an outlier to deny uh, the, the, the claim, to say that he's wrong. Davidson Academy in Reno uh, is one, for example. It's a school that only takes gifted children. Only one in a thousand are admitted entry, so that's a top one percentile IQ, much more selective than even Harvard. 
uh, he notes that although they make zero claims about having diversity in the school, that if they had any black students, he suspects they'd probably want to show those black students off, and sure enough, they do. But are they African Americans? No, they're from elsewhere. One of them, for example, is from Nigeria. Now, just on this one score alone, if race realism is true, we shouldn't be having any black people at all in the top one percentile, should we? This is a bit like denying the existence of the middle class by noting that Bill Gates exists. Well, if your proposition that the average income is $55,000, how can you possibly explain the existence of someone who, who makes billions of dollars? Clearly because there's a person who makes billions of dollars, you're wrong. No, 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 no. This is just a rehash of the same thing that you had to do with cre deal with, with creationists. Here's Michael Behe. I'm sorry, intelligent design proponentists. Here's Michael Behe and Kenneth Miller. Uh, may I answer even though we're out of time? Very briefly. Okay, very brief answer is, you read a quote and you pretended it meant something else. The quote that you read was, mutations in the early stage are less, or, are less likely to survive, not impossible, and then you pretended to say that it meant that they couldn't survive. The fact that something is less likely, the you, fact that something is less likely, figure, no, the I'm fact saying. that something, I'm answering, the fact that something is less likely does not rule it out. I agree with that. Alberts would agree with that. And I think everyone in the audience thank would you, agree with that too. Professor thank Miller. you. Science is, not a, science is about saying likely, unlikely, more likely, less likely. It's therefore not unscientific to take a guess, although many people who are not in science think it is. For instance, I had a conversation about flying saucers some years ago with laymen. Because I'm scientific, I know all about flying saucers. So I said, I don't think there are flying saucers. So the other, my antagonist said, is it impossible that there are flying saucers? Can you prove that it's impossible? I said, no, I can't prove it's impossible. It's just very unlikely. That, they say, you are very unscientific. If you can't prove it impossible, then why, how can you say it's likely that it's unlikely? So well, that's the way that is scientific. It is scientific only to say what's more likely and less likely and not to be proving all the time possible and impossible. To define what I mean, I finally said to him, listen, I mean that from my knowledge of the world that I see around me, I think that it is much more likely that the reports of flying saucers are the result of the known irrational characteristics of terrestrial intelligence <laughs> rather than the unknown <laughs> rational efforts of extraterrestrial intelligence. <laughs> They will, hear a, a, they will notice a distribution. What all distributions say is that these events near the, the center are likelier than events further away from the center. But in order to argue uh, the way they want to, they're doing exactly what Michael Behe did. They'll say that uh, when they hear X is unlikely, they'll pretend that saying X unlikely means X is impossible. They will show that something has happened or try to show that something has happened. And they'll show that therefore, because this thing has happened and the condition is that it should not be possible to happen, your proposition is wrong. It's completely dishonest or it betrays a profound uh, failure to, to reason about uh, statistics. Later on, Academic Agent puts up this, uh, this chart. It's a breakdown in the United Kingdom uh, by economic group and uh, ethnicity, not race. So it's not directly rel relevant because race is different than ethnicity. But in any event, the most glaringly obvious thing about the chart was that zero of the categories had the same uh, averages. So, you know, uh, you're not really going to argue against the proposition by pulling up data that shows, yeah, if you look at the categories, no matter how you, no matter how you slice the bologna, they ain't the same. Now, you might want to say that uh, in this academic, in any way, I don't want to get into it too much. There's a, an argument there about economic factors and what they uh, do with it, but putting it off to the side. Um, so, there's, there's that. How you doing, Kraut? And then there is uh, the Kraut kind of way, the George Bush strategy, which is that um, on, on Thursday or Friday, you're going to continue to believe whatever you believed on Monday, no matter what happens Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, so, no matter how often JF bitch slaps Kraut around, Kraut comes back and pretends as though he's not been corrected on anything, and he just keeps on making new videos, uh, I'm sorry, putting out more of his scholarly work to help the peoples of the world understand biology and to know that uh, race realism ain't true because reasons. So Kraut, I ha before I ask you a question, uh, before I give you the answer, I have uh, just a piece of advice. In the future, when you want to make a video, 
make sure that the point that you're arguing is not actually contradicted by the data you're putting up on the screen. It's very useful. Now you put up in one of your videos, uh, you're talking about horses and donkeys and thinking that they're subspecies of horse for some inexplicable reason, whatever, they're different species, but whatever. Um, that they cannot produce fertile offspring, which is uh, not true. And what you put up on the screen shows that it's not true. You, you, what you have to do is read entire sentences at a time. No one had to go research this, you lifted it from Wikipedia, but no one has to go research this. All they have to do is read your screen. It says the, the, the stallions they have are infertile. The mares that they have can be fertile. It is therefore not an evolutionary dead end of necessity because it can produce fertile offspring. That fertile offspring can mate with either of the two parent species, members in the parent species, possibly. And so it is a, it is a viable, at least in potentia, a viable uh, way to go. So you're just full of shit. Also, donkeys aren't subspecies of horses. But anyway... Now, on to the, uh, the question about, um, well, what could you possibly mean by, by the R word? Raise, raise, right, whatever it is. Raise, razor. Um, it's very easy to give an answer of what a race is. It is a, a taxonomic classification inferior to a species, uh, wherein, uh, for human purposes, you have had, a, you know, they've lived in allopatry for a sufficiently long period of time to develop enough genetic uh, difference to produce noticeable morphological, physiological, and other phenotypic uh, changes, but not so long that they constitute a new species, not so long that they no longer uh, choose to interbreed when they can, or that they can't interbreed if they wanted to. So they, uh, the two populations, when they meet up again, you know, some 50,000 years or whatever it is, they'll still be able to interbreed, and some members of each group will choose, will want to interbreed uh, with members of the other population. Therefore, uh, no problem. Now, of course, uh, this question ties into another one of your arguments, Kraut, which is that biological classifications are airtight, they're absolute, they're 100%. Nothing in science is absolute. Nothing is 100%. Uh, it's only uh, more likely, less likely, likely, unlikely. That's what science does. One of the problems with trying to deal with categories about uh, natural phenomena is that categories are discrete. Something is either in it or it is out of it. Natural phenomena occur uh, continuously. So when you impose a discrete uh, category on a, con on a continuous data set, something is going to get cut off, and other things are going to be uh, captured. And what gets, what, what gets cut off ha has some degree of arbitrariness to it, but not too much. But they're not, these uh, categories aren't as clear-cut as you would like to uh, mislead your audience into believing that they are. Now on to these pictures. Uh, there are two answers. One uh, in each set, neither of them are the same species, and yet both of them actually are. What do I mean? Uh, the first set, both of those animals can reproduce with each other, uh, and in the second set that is also true. In the first set, uh, you, uh, I'm sorry, in, well, I forget which one was first now, uh, but in one of the sets you have brown bear and polar bear. Uh, two different species that can interbreed and do interbreed in nature. Uh, so, you know, they clearly have to be of the same species because speciation is defined by, uh, you know, no longer being able to interbreed, and yet there they can do it. So, how can that be? It's because uh, they're in the middle of a speciation event, <clears throat> which hasn't completed yet, and may not ever because they do uh, still exchange some genetic material. <clears throat> But the reason that they wanted to have some way to classify them is because they already have behavioral differences. Uh, they have phenotypic differences that are noticeable to such an extent that you can distinguish them. And there's information to be gleaned from it. As Richard Dawkins, you know, one of those scientists uh, who probably, uh, like all the other scientists, don't call up high school dropouts to ask them for advice in their own field. I don't know why this would be the case, why PhD level uh, scientists don't write textbooks uh, that people like you, Kraut, use, that you read, and then uh, take a test on and fail the test. I don't know why they wouldn't call you for advice to explain their field to them, but for some reason they don't feel compelled to do that. Uh, who, who can explain it? Idiotic retard. Uh, about human races. There are some human races. There's information to be gleaned from it. Therefore, it is taxonomically useful to have a category. But if we take the, oh, what could you possibly mean by race, and since you can't tell me, race doesn't exist, uh, or the, it has to be a categorical thing that admits of no exceptions. 
If you take that seriously, you're going to undo a great deal of biological classification. What we, what we call species now uh, would be gone. We have to get rid of that category. You have to get rid of uh, genera. You have to get rid of family. And you have to get rid of order. So it'll be kingdom, phylum, class, uh, and that will be it. Class will become species, and then you'll have kingdom, phylum, uh, species. That's what you're going to be left with, because the 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 star um, of the two sets you have the bears, and then you have the aquatic creatures. The starfish is one of them. Those are actually they belong in different orders, and yet they can still interbreed and produce fertile offspring. So. It, it is simply not the case that these things are as airtight as you'd like to imagine that they are. We're trying to do the best that we can by using uh, categories imposed on continuous phenomena to be able to say some useful things about that phenomena and to make the, the uh, reasoning about it a little bit easier. There's no problem with that at all. So too is that true with race. Um, races do in fact exist. If you give people pictures of other people from different uh, racial groups, uh, they will be able to sort them with almost no failure rate, and they'll be able to do it very quickly. It's readily discernible, and the thing, of it, the thing about it is, is uh, I'll end on this, uh, you try to distinguish between biological and sociological factors. In some sense, it's useful to, to distinguish the two, in the same way it's useful to distinguish biology from physics. But biology is just an outcrop of physics, and sociology is an outcrop of biology. Uh, there are no facts that exist about humans which do, which do not have a genetic cause in part. Everything about us, all down the line uh, in our phenotype, is a product of our genotype and the environment. And then the interplay, the, the feedback between uh, those two, and that there is no trait that doesn't have a genetic basis somewhere. None whatever. They all do. And it should not be surprising that Homo sapien, uh, you know, our intelligence being one of our defining features, would uh, have something um, that's heritable, highly heritable, in that way. The way that you know that there's a genetic basis to it, well, one is, deals with us, uh, deals with biological life, and there's nothing that we do that our genes won't permit us to do, but the other way is, is twin studies. If you look at a person who takes an IQ test, the test retest on that is going to be 95, 0.95. So you don't have an IQ identical to yourself, and that's what I'm saying. Uh, you're off by 5%. If you look at uh, um, identical twins reared together, theirs is 86%. If you look at uh, those same twins reared apart, it is uh, 75%. Okay? Uh, that 0.75 is what is ex you, it, it, similarity, is what I'm saying. Um, that shows that there is a genetic component to it. You put, the, you put two genetically identical or nearly identical people into different environments and they are still highly correlated in respect of their IQ. No matter what you do to those people, no, the types of environments you put them in, if they can thrive in it, they're going to come out with very similar outcomes because there is a strong genetic influence on our, uh, our brain which makes perfect sense. It is our defining feature, homo sapien, the you know, thinking man. And it's perfectly sensible that uh, our ability to think would be governed by our genes as moderated in, uh, in our environment, like pretty much everything else. The only question to be answered is how much gene, how much environment? And that is a much harder question. But the fact that there is a genetic component to it is not to be doubted. In order for people like you, Kraut, to get your way, you need to support the proposition that genes have zero influence on IQ, a proposition you cannot hope to show is, is the case. You don't have a snowball's chance in hell. Have a great day.